Ren from Hallowed Be Thy Game, and today I'm going to share with you my favorite modern Metroidvanias. Let's check it out. Welcome back to another episode of Hallowed Be Thy Game, and I am so stoked to be sharing with you all of the Metroidvanias that I think are flying under the radar on modern consoles. Now, obviously you got your Metroids, you have your Hollow Knights. I'm not going to be covering those here today. I feel like anyone with even remote interest in the genre is going to be told hundreds if not thousands of times that you need to play those. No, I want to give a chance to shine a light on those Metroidvanias that are just flying under the radar that deserve way more love than they're receiving. So if you enjoy these kind of deep dives into genres, please consider liking and subscribing. It helps out the channel massively, and it also lets me know that you want to see more videos like this. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive right on in. Now the first game on today's list is Overlord Escape from Nasrig. Now this is an anime adaptation. No, you don't need to be a, a, a seasoned Overlord fan to appreciate this game. However, if you are a fan of the anime, I think you're going to have even more fun with this. But the story and setting and everything is perfectly accessible, and it tells its own unique kind of sub-story in the Overlord universe. So there's something new for everybody here. But this is just a quality, gorgeously animated, pixel graphic Metroidvania set in the Overlord universe. Now, you're going to be playing as kind of like an extremely interesting uh, dark hero. <laughs> we'll just kind of leave it at that. But it's just a very fascinating kind of story and concept where you're trying to escape from Nazarick, and it is phenomenal. I love this game. The boss fights and everything is just animated extremely well. The gameplay is smooth, very unique, and it's just a serviceable quality Metroidvania that nobody ever seems to talk about, which is pretty shocking to me because, I mean, you know, if you get like a waifu pixel graphics and it looks great, it runs great, this is a fantastic modern Metroidvania that you need to check out. Now, the next game on today's list is Rabby Ribby. I love this game. If you're a fan of bullet hell type games, but also Metroidvanias, this is going to be right up your alley. This game is on the harder end of the games listed here today. This is an excellent pick up and play game that I think everybody's gonna be having a blast with. Now, I originally played this on the PS Vita. It runs great on Switch. You can get this on Steam. And yeah, this is just a banging title that you definitely need to be checking out. Now, while the fights are gonna be scaling in difficulty and get pretty wild and hectic as the game goes on, it's just an excellent challenge. So if you're in the mood for something that's gonna be pushing your skills to the limit, I absolutely would check out Rabby Ribby. Now, this leads me into my next recommendation, which is the newest game I've played on today's list, which is Tevi. I absolutely love this game. This is gonna be an excellent entry point for people who might be new to the genre but want to play something different than some of the heavy hitters. Now, this is effectively the spiritual successor to Rabby Ribby, but it's going to be much more approachable with difficulty options and whatnot to be able to just kind of ease you into this type of world and gameplay. But yeah, you're going to be having some bullet hell style mechanics with some boss fights and whatnot, but you're going to have just an excellent quality Metroidvania on top of it. You got gorgeous animation. Yeah, this is just the easiest recommend on today's list, and I absolutely feel that if you've kind of exhausted all of the usual suspects out there, you need to be jumping into Tevi and give this one a go. Now, the next game on today's list is what I would consider to be the absolute best hidden gem on the Nintendo Switch and effectively Steam as well, but that is Sword of the Vagrant. Now, on Steam, this is going to be found as The Vagrant, but this game is absolutely incredible. Now, if you're a fan of old school Vanillaware games like Muramasa, the Demon Blade, or maybe Odin Sphere, this is 100% the easiest recommendation for you. But yeah, so you have this excellent Vanillaware aesthetic, some action RPG style mechanics, and that quality 2D action platformer where you're going to be going around exploring, building up power levels, being able to unlock passageways and whatnot. Excellent, big, epic boss fights. It's all there. To me, it is criminal this game has flown under the radar so much. Now, I do have a full-length review of this on my channel. If you want to check that out, I'll have it linked in the description. This is a very high-stakes story. You have intriguing characters and just kind of a plot that keeps thickening 
Uh, there's a lot of highs and lows in the story, and there is a secret ending out there. Uh, for those who are up to the challenge, because it's locked behind a pretty ruthless boss fight. However, even if you want to skip that, there's just an excellent story here and world to discover. Sword of the Vagrant, a must play in my book. Now, moving on, we have Grim Guardians Demon Purge. Look, if you are a fan of old school Castlevania, like Castlevania 1, 2, 3, you know, like, you know, definitely a little bit more on that end and not as much into the Symphony of the Night territory. This is just an excellent Castlevania 3 clone to where you're going to be swapping between these two sisters and being able to go on a wild and zany adventure. If you've ever played like the Gal, the Gal Gun games or any of those where it's just kind of this fan service, over the top waifu, crazy adventure. It has that feel and that setting to this, but don't let that dissuade you if you're if you're not into that. This is just an absolutely banging action platformer to where you're gonna be able to have solid crisp combat, some wild boss fights, and I just love the level design here. And really, NT Creates is just hitting banger after banger out of the park. Anybody who's a fan of maybe the Bloodstained style of games, this is an easy recommendation, and I think no one's going to be wasting their money on this title. Definitely check out Grim Guardian's Demon Purge. Now, one of the most recommended games to me back in the day that I drugged my feet on for quite some time is Record of Lotus War. Look, for anyone out there who's a fan of Symphony and Night, this is just a no-brainer. Uh, it's got all the quality, smooth gameplay that you would expect from this genre, but you have just gorgeous pixel art that just sucks me right in. Just an excellent world and kind of lore to explore if you're a fan of the original anime. I believe I, I'm, I'm unfortunately not too familiar with the franchise. However, this game really sucked me in and I can't wait to learn more about it. But yes, if you are in need of more Symphony of the Night in your life, Look no further than Record of Lotus War. This is an absolute titan, hidden gem people need to be checking out. Now, I got a bit of a curveball for you all today, and that is Xenon Valkyrie Plus. Now, I have referred to the Diabolical Mind trilogy in the past, and this is their first title. Xenon Valkyrie Plus is a rogue light action um, <laughs> adventure Metroidvania, but you're going to be able to build up a cumulative power gains and whatnot from going out and trying to get as far as you can. You'll build up a resource. You'll be able to upgrade your character back at home base and set out for a run. This is so phenomenal. I love this game so much. Again, gorgeous pixel art, but what's so interesting about this is the different movesets and characters that you can use to kind of traverse the Xenon Valkyrie Tower throughout all the different levels and stages. There's secret endings. There's a lot to unlock here. It's just a ton of fun. This game is continuously at an extremely cheap price. And again, if you find yourself falling in love with this, I would recommend their other twin stick shooter games, Riddled Corpse EX, and also Demon's Tier Plus. Uh, Diabolical Mind crushes it, and Xenon Valkyrie Plus is criminally underrated. Now, Dead or School. I have shouted out this game quite a few times, so I'm not going to kind of hammer it home again here. However, if you're a fan of kind of Diablo uh, dungeon crawler power progression systems where you're going to be upgrading weapons and whatnot, different move styles and everything, then this is absolutely going to be up your alley if you want that mixed with a Metroidvania style world. Look, you're effectively in the apocalypse and you're trying to make your way to the surface going throughout all of these godforsaken hellscape um, train tunnels and whatnot under the city. Anyways, it's fantastic. A very creepy, eerie feeling game mixed in with a lot of fan service, okay? With all of that, it is still just a fantastic Metroidvania RPG that I really wish more people would give a shot to. But yes, Dead or School, gotta check this one out. Now, speaking of roguelite style of Metroidvanias, we have a robot named Fight. Again, this is another procedurally generated uh, game, but if you're in the mood for more older school style Metroidvanias, maybe from like the GBA era, but you're wanting kind of endless gameplay with that, I would definitely check out a robot named Fight. Look, it's a quality built game. It's extremely addictive. And I just really freaking love this game and it just works. I really would never have been open to the roguelite genre mixing with this gameplay genre however with xenon valkyrie plus and robot named fight i really think that when it works it works and i totally recommend these next up we have infernax this is kind of a hardcore <laughs> uh, 
pushing it to the limit style of game that's ultra violent, ultra over the top, but really if somebody's in the mood for some maybe some Simon's Quest NES style of game mixed with just like, like Clive Barker, I mean it is just wild. It's insane. It plays excellent. I would say on this list today, this is probably the one that's pushing it to being a little too well known. I kind of debated on putting this one in here. I don't know. You let me know. Do you think this is a hidden gem anymore or not? I, yeah. Anyways, it's fantastic and totally worth a pickup. Now coming in next, we have Lost Ruins. Oh, I freaking love this game. There is a, I believe, pre-orders for this for a physical that's available. Um, I think through Red Art Games. But anyways, Lost Ruins is just an excellent 2D action platformer. And the art style in this, I would dare say this is some of the best pixel art lighting ever. I mean, if you have like maybe an OLED Steam Deck or an OLED Switch, it, this is jaw dropping looking, okay? It really is just gorgeous, runs great. It's a short game. However, there's a lot of replay value to run through this with different characters, but I really can't recommend this one enough to you. It is a little bit more methodical, slower paced 2D action platformer to where you can be punished more if you get impatient. But if you're just, you know, wait for openings with enemies and whatnot, you're really gonna have a lot of success in this. It's not an extremely difficult game. This one was kind of overhyped to me as being a very difficult game. And I wouldn't go that far, but if you use kind of, you know, thinking outside the box with fighting enemies, you're gonna have a lot of success here. And it's really fun and unique, and I still find myself coming back to it. Lost Ruins, a definite must play. Now we have Toho Luna Nights. This is, again, another must play for Symphony of the Night fans. It looks great, it runs great. This is just an easy recommendation. I love the pixel art, quality gameplay here, and it's a kind of a criminal shame that this is still, in my opinion, still an, a hidden gem. But there are physical options available for this, I believe through Play Asia still. There might be some others, if you know, let people know in the comments. However, really, uh, if you're just into digital gaming, this is not gonna be hard on the wallet in the slightest. However, it's just an absolutely banging game and more people need to be checking it out. And with that, those are 12 Metroidvania hidden gems that I think you need to be checking out now. Now, I do have more that I wanna share, but I wanted to go ahead and get this video out to you. Is this a type of video you would like to see more of? I would really appreciate your feedback down in the comments. Like this video if you liked it and subscribe for more Metroidvania content. I wish you all the best and I'll see you next time.